Howdy Tubes, welcome back to the Zach Life. So this is episode 17 of the Petermobile Toter Home. Uh, in this episode, we're going to get the truck started, crank it up. I'm going to mow a spot in the grass and pull the truck over here and we're going to get it ready to go into the knife. Well, that didn't work. Let me introduce you to the world's best, or maybe I should say most extreme, battery charger. A uh, Forney 80 amp welding machine. <laughs> Let's see if we can jump start 24 volts with 40. Now, I should say you shouldn't try this at home unless you're a, a very well skilled, highly intelligent idiot like me. <laughs> Ouch! Ah, oh, it shocked me. Now, we'll make this one a negative and we'll connect it to the chassis. And we'll make this one a positive. And we'll connect it. That might not fit. DC amps. And let's crank it up a little. 62 amps on a deck. I touched the frame of his truck, it's shocking me. <laughs> What'd you look at there? Let's see you jump start a 24 volt semi with anything else. Uh, this pull as simple as could be I want to uh, try to just get the rear end out of it so I can get the uh, brake chambers and stuff off and the airbag so I can run to town tomorrow and get more
I'm under here mounting these shock brackets for the rear axle. I'm taking some regular old silicone like you buy at Lowe's. I'm putting some under here just to smear so that water can't get between this bracket and frame and cause any rust. Here's the airbags that you saw me install last night. Um, you know, this is a set that goes on the front axle. I went to Lowe's, and the only way you could get from half inch to eighth inch pipe was with two steps and all this crap to make a T. It's about as gay as AIDS. I'm gonna put a tank valve on the inside on the other end. It's like a, like a Schrader valve type deal like you air your tire up with. So I'll be able to air this back axle up with an air chuck and have it aired up, you know, because it's gonna be a long time before I get the air system finished on this thing. We're gonna go over real quickly how the air brakes work on a truck like this. Now I'm gonna throw a bunch of information at you. Just follow along and I'll sort of put it all together here at the end. I couldn't think of an easier way to do this. Now, I'm not going to talk about the air system as far as how the, how, the, how the brake pedal and such is attached to the brakes. We're going over simply how the brakes work, how the air, air brakes uh, function in a truck like this. All right, we're underneath here looking at the brakes on this truck. <clears throat> this, is the, uh, this is the air line that would, that would bring air from your brake pedal or whatever we're not going to go over that at all we're just going over the actual brake brakes themselves anyway when you apply air to this here this is called an air biscuit or an air or a brake chamber applying air to this this works like an air cylinder and it pushes out on this rod you you apply air to the port the rod pops out and so when you apply air It'll, it'll cause this to be pushed out. <clears throat> now this piece right here is called a slack adjuster. This one is manual. 
The newer ones are automatic. In my opinion, the automatic ones are not that great uh, because they'll they'll work great until they don't work and you'll get pulled over and, and get a ticket. It's easier just to buzz underneath your truck every month or so and uh, adjust your brakes. You don't have to worry about it. Anyway, these have got a sleeve right here. This sleeve is spring-loaded, can be pushed in, and this is a 9 16 bolt head. Now to adjust these, you'll take a 9 16 box in wrench, push in on the wrench, it pushes that sleeve back, and this lets you gives you the ability to turn that nut. Now I don't know if you can see, but as I turn this, it's turning this, this shaft inside the slack adjuster. This shaft is called an S-cam. It is splined to this, it's got a big greasy uh, C-clip, you pop the C-clip and this will come off and the slack adjuster can go in there. This, the the S-cam I mean. Uh, the S-cam as it sounds is a cam, sh is sort of a cam that's shaped like an S and it's sitting right inside of here. It's a shaft that goes all the way through from here back inside the brakes. You can see the edge of the actual brake lining is here. This is the drum. The brake lining, the brake shoe, has got a roller down sort of in here that sits on that S-cam. And as you rotate that S-cam, it pushes both brake shoes away from each other. That's what actually gives you the brake force. As the brake shoes wear, you take the slack up in the brake shoes with the slack adjuster. Now I back this off as you saw earlier and when you move this you know that moves way too far. It has to move way too far before it applies the brakes and so to tighten it up you simply tighten it up so to speak. When you get it where you want it you can sort of wiggle your bolt back and forth and this little spring-loaded sleeve, which is splined 9 16 pops out and locks this nut. And this will set the correct amount of <clears throat> free travel on your brake chambers. So we're going to pull this off. I want to talk about in a minute the, the difference why I'm changing these. Just bear with me. You'll get the terminology in a minute. Uh, this is a non-spring brake. What we're going back on here is a spring brake, uh, emergency brake, same thing emergency parking spring brake all the same thing to remove these if this is a spring brake you must you must chamber the the can and we'll go over what that is in a minute but pretend this is a, a spring brake you've already chambered the brake it's ready to come off so this got a pin right here this pin has got a cotter pin just a regular cotter pin you stick through and bend the ears over on the back side you pull that cotter pin out pull this pin out and then it's got two 15 16 nuts I guess it'd help if I went the right way you pull these two nuts off and then this brake chamber just comes out and we'll show you what it looks like in just a minute all right there it's off and here's what came off so let's make some sense of this. So this is the uh, brake chamber that is pulled off of that axle. Now, as I'm fixing to explain, that axle, that back drive axle, did not have a parking brake or an or emergency brake. It was a, uh, what they call a service brake, the, 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 the brake part when you hit the brake pedal, that's called the service brake. Uh, it had service brakes only. The front drive axle does have a parking brake, emergency brake. Uh, this seem to be more typical in the older trucks. I'm not sure exactly why. Most trucks you see today will have the emergency parking brakes on, on all drive axles. So this is just a simple straightforward brake chamber as I was explaining. It's got a rubber diaphragm that's pinched in between the two halves. It's held together by this big clamp uh, with a steel disc and on the disc is attached this rod and when you apply air to it it pops out, pushes on the slack adjuster, turns the S-cam, the S-cam pushes on the brake shoes, and it stops you. So, I pulled this off because it doesn't have parking brakes, and I want parking brakes. So here is what is going back on it. A side note, or not a side note, 
These are called out, the part numbers, by the square inches of the diaphragm. So this is referred to as a 30. If you walk in and say you want a standard stroke 30 brake chamber, they'll know exactly what you mean. This is a 30-30. It's got two chambers in it. That's why it's called a 30-30. The front half of this brake chamber is exactly the same as this brake chamber. You'll notice they basically look the same. The difference is, is this brake chamber has got a very large spring back here in the back of it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's close to as stout as, as like a coal spring in a small car. It's a heck of a spring. Now you may note that the bolt on this one is much longer and this is how they're shipped because this is a very common brake chamber and it fits many, many different kinds of trucks and models. Uh, from really, really old trucks to brand new ones. And anyway, you just cut the thread off however long you need it. It's got two ports, and I've already got an air chuck thing rigged up in here. Uh, what do you call those? I don't call them chuck, I call them Larry's. I got an air Larry in here. And anyway, it's got another diaphragm, and you, when you apply air to the emergency port, this diaphragm collapses this spring. When this spring is collapsed, this brake chamber works just exactly like this, like the other one. It's just off the camera here. So let's go ahead and air this up. Now you'll notice that this one, or you may not notice, but you're fixing to notice, that this one is already fully extended. And that's exactly what this spring does. When you do not have air pressure applied to the emergency brake side, it extends this with this extremely heavy spring and applies the brakes. So when there's no air in the truck, the brakes are always applied. So let's go ahead and air this up. Now you'll notice it pulled this rod back in and it has effectively released the brakes. Now, if we now take my blow gun and shoot air into the service port, it works just like the other one. Sort of. It's got new, new stiff rubber. Anyway, it takes 60 PSI to fully collapse this spring. So when you release your brakes, you must have at least 60 PSI of air to do so. And when you set your parking brake, you're actually relieving the air off of this, off of this back chamber. Now I was talking about, let me relieve the air off this and the spring will push this back out. I spoke earlier about caging a brake. Now you notice it's got this rubber plug in the back. You pop this plug open. All of these brake chambers originally come with caged bolts, but most of them usually fall out or are robbed. And it's got a sort of a T-handle, and it's gonna be hard to show on camera, but there's a slot back here in the sort of a plate thing that goes in the end of the spring. And when you stick it in the slot, and you turn it a quarter of a turn, and it locks in there. Anyway, take the Acme thread bolt, nut and, and, and supplied washer, And you take a wrench and you tighten this down and it'll pull and collapse the spring. And that's not something you typically ever have to do unless it's something like, you know, if you lose a brake chamber, I suppose you could pinch the airline off and cage the brake or something like that. It's not legal to go down the road with it, but a wrecker might use it or if you've got a jump truck you're trying to move. I'm not going to suck that down because it'd be a lot of work. But I can show you, if you apply air to the emergency brake and let it collapse the spring, you know, it pops this out and if you run the, run the nut down and then release the air, well this gets extremely tight and the, uh, the parking brake is not applied. Now another note, when you change these out, you need to have the S cam needs to be at a right angle to the to the clevis. 
you know you don't want the clevis too short so that the you know the, the chamber comes in like this or too long where it's like this it needs to be at a relative right angle <clears throat> and so you need to have you know typically the old ones are correct you just need to cut the new ones off at about the same length as the old ones now I was talking about caging these before you remove this type of, of brake chamber and you must do that because if this is not caged the spring is pushing forward and it has the brakes fully applied and if you take these nuts off this is going to come flying back and could uh, possibly do you some damage so i hope that made sense I, I see especially in the rv community a lot of misinformation and how the air brakes and air systems work and people argue about you know running out of air and the parking brakes not working and such and, uh, and, and, and this is not true. I, ho I hope that this clears some of that up. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how these rear ends are connected, if you would. A lot of people seem to think that there's just a drive shaft that goes in the front rear end and, and, and powers it, and then it goes out the back into the, to the back rear end and powers it. And it's really a lot more complicated than that. And there's a reason for that. When you put a lot of horsepower in, in these trucks, and, you, and especially if you haul something heavy it wouldn't be such a big deal in this but these these rear ends will get hot they'll build a significant amount of heat and if you don't have your power split between two rear ends you could easily burn one rear end up and so this thing up here is called a power divider and that's exactly what it does it, it equally divides the power between the front and back rear ends so this power divider is a, just a deferential. Now, when you think deferential, you think ring and pinion, and it doesn't have a ring and pinion because it all turns, you know, all the shafts are all uh, parallel. They're not, you know, there's not a right angle to drive it. Now, there is another deferential that's actually in the rear end, and there is a ring and pinion in here, but not in the power divider. It's kind of hard to explain without a diagram. I may see if I can find a good diagram and put it over the video, but this is simply a deferential. And so the output, this would be the input of the differential. The output is this shaft that goes all the way through and also the pinion of the ring and pinion of this rear end. You'll notice, as with the differential, if you turn only one tire, that the input yoke turns half as speed. as you turn either shaft. This here is called an inner axle differential lock or better known as a power divider or a power divider lock. Now this is not locking the differential in the front or rear end but only the differential in the power divider. Anyway I guess I'm going to finish this video up. I realize this this grin is not in. This is Sunday August like I think this is the 30th or something I'm not sure don't have my watch but uh that give me a week to get this thing uh get my video edited and get this rear end i've been extremely busy i know these videos have been kind of spaced out they hadn't been coming very often but uh i've been having to make a living <laughs> but anyway appreciate you watching like subscribe give it a thumbs up share it on facebook whatever you'd like to do uh we will catch you here probably be going to be a couple of weeks again before I get another video out but we will uh, catch you in a couple of weeks I'm gonna try to get the uh, get the truck on it next video